Hello and welcome. I am Chakshu Roy and you're watching Laws in the Making on Rajya Sabha TV. Today on the show, we are discussing the draft National Dental Commission Bill 2020. To discuss the draft bill, I have on the show with me Dr. Ashu Gupta, Principal Government Dental College, Shimla, and Dr. Anoop Kanse, Department of Orthodontics, Maulana Zad Institute of Dental Sciences, Delhi. Currently, dental education professionals are regulated by the Dental Council of India. The government has proposed a draft National Dental Commission Bill 2020, which sets up a National Dental Commission. The bill also proposes to set up four autonomous boards and a dental advisory council. The draft bill comes after the National Medical Commission Act, which replaced the Medical Council of India. The bill sets up the National Dental Commission for the development and regulation of dental education, profession and dental institutions. The NDC will consist of 30 members appointed by the central government. The bill also constitutes a Dental Advisory Council to advise the Commission on matters of dental education, training and research. The Advisory Council will have representatives from all states and union territories and from the state dental councils. Dental education has really expanded a lot these days. I mean, we have innumerable dental colleges today and the standards vary in all the dental colleges. You do not, uh, the, the recognition of, of a particular course in a particular college may, be, may have a different kind of standards and the other college may have different kind of standards. The education, the students coming out of one institution may have different standards, the other education may have different standards. So to, to probably level them up, uh, you really require a commission which will look into uh, the uh, entry to the dental colleges, entry to the dental educations and probably a exit examination which is which is emphasized in this uh, National Dental Commission bill, the new bill which has come up, uh, where we'll have level playing fields and a uniform dental uh, education and dental health and dental health care providers, um, let's say satisfactorily they will, they will comply with a particular kind of a level of uh, expertise uh, so that uh, the uh, oral health care in India would definitely be benefited. And moreover, you know, there are a lot of people coming out, uh, coming from abroad who got, uh, got the degrees from abroad. When they come to India, how do they practice? So there has to be some kind of, uh, some kind of level playing field for them as well. So they will also uh, probably, uh, they will also give the national exit examination and get the license to practice. Now, there's going to be a uniform uh, ex exit examination which will give you a, give, which will give you the license to practice and also this is going to be the uh, the scenario where uh, this these marks will be uh, accepted for the eligibility to the postgraduate education some of the functions of the national dental commission include framing policies for regulating dental institutions and dental professionals Assessing the requirements of dental healthcare related human resources and infrastructure and framing guidelines for determination of fees in private dental institutions and deemed universities. A national exit exam will provide ROI uh, provide exam. What will happen is that all the private colleges or government colleges will have to give an exam after graduation. और जो बाहर से भी लोग ग्रेजुएशन करके आएंगे किसी डेवलपिंग कंट्री से या किसी भी कंट्री से तो वो भी जब इंडिया में आएंगे तो उन्हें एक एग्जाम देना होगा जो कि नेशनल एग्जिट एग्जाम है जिससे कि ये एक लेवल ऑफ एजुकेशन हमारा सेट हो जाएगा अगर मान लो कोई मिनिमम कोई ग्रेजुएशन कर चुके हैं किसी भी कॉलेज से ये तो उनका जो मिनिमम परसेंटेज होगा वो उनको अचीव करना होगा उसी के बाद उनका प्रैक्टिस उनको इंडिया में प्रैक्टिस करना अलाउड होगा इससे एक लेवल ऑफ एजुकेशन अचीव होगा पता चलेगा कि कौन से कॉलेजेस में कितना अच्छे से पढ़ाई हो रही है सारे के सारे उनके नॉर्म्स पूरे हो रहे हैं कि नहीं हो रहे हैं मेरे हिसाब से ये एक अच्छी चीज है और फ्यूचर में ये आ सकती है। The bill sets up four autonomous boards under the supervision of the NDC, two boards for education and two boards for regulation of dental institutions and dental professionals. The Undergraduate Dental Education Board and the Postgraduate Dental Education Board will regulate and determine academic standards of dental education. In addition, they will also determine norms for infrastructure and faculty. Dr. Gupta, I wanted to start the program with you. Uh, the Dentist Act uh, is as old as 1948. So can you just give us a little bit of context about how the profession of you know, dentists is regulated in the country? 
uh, well, uh, when it started initially uh, after the independence, in 1948 this act, as you rightly pointed out, it came into being. And since then, this act has been, under this act, there is something called as Dental Council of India, which was formulated. And the Dental Council of India is the body which is supposed to regulate the profession of dentistry across the country. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Anup, you know, you are, you know, currently in an educational institution. One of the things that I wanted to understand from you is that how do you become a dentist? Well, in, in India, uh, before the NEET exams came, you used to give the either the state dental or uh, common entrance examination. And when you clear that, depending on your rank, you used to get either MBBS or you used to get BDS as okay. a subject. Okay. So the idea is you give a common entrance exam and then you have a field that you can choose from. Right. And is the education, the length of the education similar as to an MBBS exam? Yes, there's a difference of only six months. Uh, it's six months shorter than the MBBS program. Okay. And uh, internship is of the same period of one year, which is a paid rotary internship. Okay. But the course was just six months shorter than the MBBS course. Okay. Uh, Professor Gupta, you are a principal of a dental college. True. So how, you know, so as Anu pointed out, you know, you give an exam, uh, you know, after class 12th, you give a common entrance exam, uh, you get a rank and then you join a dental college. How is the curriculum, uh, you know, for the profession then devised? Well, the curriculum is again devised by the, there are under the Dental Council of India as it has been regulated now. We have something called as subcommittees. There is an undergraduate subcommittee, there is a postgraduate subcommittee. It is the duty of the undergraduate subcommittee to devise the syllabi or the curriculum which is to be taught in all the four years. We have a BDS course which is a four years, starting from first, second, third and final year and one year of internship. So it is going to be a five year program for dentistry in India. Uh, so that is how it is as of now being regulated through the Dental Council of India by the undergraduate committee which gives suggestions. These suggestions are taken from all across the country, from the specialization bodies, from the principals of various colleges and some specific experts who have done remarkable work in their own specializations. Okay. So, you know, there is a comprehensive mechanism for setting up the curriculum. And how does the curriculum get updated to keep up, you know, with the changing technology or changing needs? Yeah. As uh, what happens is, uh, you would appreciate that it is a dynamic science. So there are certain things which become obsolete over a period of time and there are certain new innovations which come up in the, mar in, in, the, in the society, in the market for the betterment of the patients. So these things are updated, the syllabi is updated once in every 10 years. Uh, recently we have gone through the exercise and the recommendations from the Dental Council of India has already gone to the ministry to my understanding. Uh, it is lying with the ministry, the moment they give us a go ahead there will be certain changes for the next 10 years again coming into being. Okay. And you know, one of the things that uh, gets talked about quite a bit is uh, uh, the number of doctors in the country, right? And, uh, you know, I wanted to get a sense from you as to what is the strength of, uh, you know, dentists as professional doctors uh, across the country and is that enough or do we, do we not need more people in the profession? Well, the number of dentists in the country has increased exponentially over the years because of a mushrooming of a large number of dental colleges, particularly in the last decade or so. So right now the situation as far as dentistry is concerned, vis a vis a availability. See the calculation, the way a dental college is given permission to open depends on the population of the country. But it is very badly misrepresented in the fact that the colleges, they are maybe spread in the far different places of the country, but dentists tend to mushroom to the bigger cities and the bigger places. As of, if you look at the population, population ratio to the dentist ratio, it would be very nice. But the number of dentists has increased so much that uh, people are in dentistry are finding it very difficult to uh, have a very roaring practice because they all want to concentrate to bigger cities. Whereas uh, the ratio would say that our population is so huge that we need to have dent more dentists. But the ground reality is that the number of dentists because of so many dental colleges is so high that people are not getting jobs. But the government cannot provide jobs for everybody. But then practice is an option. The practice is not lucrative unless you have uh, a practice where you have to take out the costs that are involved in the practice, setting up the setup, then the infrastructure, then your materials, everything you have to pay for. That is ultimately paid in private by a patient. So if you look at it, the number of dentists in the country as such are already high. The but what you are pointing out is that the number of dentists might be high, but they are not evenly spread, spread out. out over the country. That's why the problem is there of uh, because you know the calculation always comes as you, you uh, like you 
have a per capita income. So your number of doctors or number of dentists required as per the ratio of the population. If you look at that, then the deficits might, there will still be deficiency of uh, dentists in this country. But the reality is that they all mushroom into big places. Nobody wants to go to a small village, which is the same problem with the medical professionals, that nobody wants to go to rural areas and practice over there. And in dentistry, the uh, problem is complicated because you need to have your machinery there. You need to have a dental chain. You need to have other uh, infrastructure to give quality dental care to somebody, even in a village background. So unless that is not provided by the government or maybe NGOs and other agencies, it's going to be very difficult to uh, bridge that gap between the requirement and the reality that is there. Okay. Dr. Gupta, so what does this mean, you know, for the dental health of this country? Well, carrying on from where he left, I would like to, if you want to know exactly as per the databases, uh, well, the WHO figure is 1 is to 3,000 population, you need a dentist. That means one dentist after every 3,000 population. As in today in our country, we are producing roughly around 26 plus thousand, thousand plus dentists per year. That is the BDS part. And we have nearly around 7,000 postgraduates, that is the specialists coming out, being churned out in the country every year. As in today, the rough population of uh, dentists in uh, our country will be somewhere 2 lakh plus. So, some of the states, particularly the down south states, as, uh, I, uh, as, as it is being told, uh, they already have reached the uh, uh, dentist population of roughly 1 to 3,000. So, there is excess production, no doubt about it. But then, uh, considering the availability of dentists in the rural areas, particularly in the villages, as Dr. Anoop has also mentioned, there is a deficiency. So, uh, that even distribution, of course, we do lack. And the towns where the socioeconomic strata of the masses is good, there the availability or concentration of dentists is more because it is more lucrative. Okay, uh, you know, so <coughs> dentistry is lucrative in areas where there's a paying population, and obviously there's a dearth of dentists in areas, villages or rural areas. But let's say if if somebody wanted to set up, you know, an institution uh, or a college for you know teaching uh, the profession. How does that, you know, get addressed uh, currently? Right now, though, uh, you have to take uh, permissions from the state, both for the university where it will be affiliated and from the state, uh, which again is calculated on the basis of the population to the dentist ratio, as Dr. Uh, Gupta currently pointed out, that we need to see that ratio, then the state would give an essentiality certificate permission to open up the dental college. Then that person would get that institute ins inspected by the dental council norms, before that by the state, uh, university to get affiliation, provisional affiliation, it's initially a provisional affiliation and then for the faculty, the material, the infrastructure, everything is inspected and then through steps, through periodic inspections, approval is given. So it is a, a complicated and a lengthy process and a well-made process which has stood a test of time over the years. But the, again the problem comes at calculating the requirement, like sir said, in some places the ratio of the dentist to the population may be achieved because the number of colleges being there for so many years. But in other states, it is grossly deficient. Still, the number of dentists required shows the figure, so it should be more. But that's not the reality. It's time now for us to head into a break. When we come back, we will discuss the other two autonomous board and provisions on the common entrance test and dentistry license under the bill. Welcome back. On the program today, we are discussing the draft National Dental Commission Bill 2020. The bill constitutes a, nas a National Dental Commission to regulate dental education, professionals and institutions. The third board, the Dental Assessment and Rating Board, will be responsible for granting permission to establish new dental institutions. In addition, it will assess dental institutions and, if necessary, can reduce intake and stop admissions. The board can also make recommendations to the Commission to revoke the recognition of dental institutions which do not comply with the academic standards. According to the Royal Committee, the standard of education is going day by day depending upon the colleges. It is going down but according to them, if uh, they are setting up of, uh, an uh, autonomous body for checking up the standard of education, definitely it will help all over the Indian people for the oral health sector that if the standard of education is to be maintained for each and every colleges they should have a minimum number of dental chairs 
the minimum number of patients and the exposure to a BDS graduate or an MDS graduate, the hours of work, they are uh, adding up the subjects for the uh, medical side subject also they are adding up in the dentistry so that a BDS graduate or a postgraduate should have an ample knowledge to perform well. The Ethics and Dental Registration Board will maintain national registers for all licensed dentists and promote ethical conduct. The State Dental Council will be responsible for maintaining and updating the state register. Dentists who are not enrolled in the state or national register will not be allowed to practice as qualified dentists. Those who are in violation of these provisions will be punishable with a prison term of up to one year or a fine up to 5 lakh rupees or both. Moreover, uh, the Dental Council, the uh, Dental Commission, a uh, new bill has envisaged uh, uh, the Dental Commission. After that, it will have a National Dental Council. And in, after that, it will also have uh, autonomous boards. And you know, the best part, the beautiful part of this is that all these, st all these stages of dental education have been segregated. Say, undergraduate autonomous board, postgraduate autonomous board, ethical board, research board. And all these things, all these people will work in unison and they will give their, their, their inputs to the National Dental uh, 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 Council and the council will uh, also uh, give their uh, views and inputs to the commission and commission will be uh, probably uh, looking after the, the uniformity of dental education, the uh, excellence in dental education and research, the ethics of the dental education. Uh, this is going to be a wonderful thing for India. The draft bill proposes to have a uniform national eligibility come entrance test for admissions to undergraduate dental education. This will be conducted by the National Medical Commission. A common examination called the National Exit Test is also proposed for final year undergraduate students to obtain a license for dentistry practice. This test will be used for enrollment in the state and national registers as well. I know before we went into a break, one of the things that we were talking about was, you know, the process of establishment of a dental uh, institution of dental yeah. teaching. So you were completing that. Thought. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as, we, as I was telling you that we go through the steps. So after getting a permission essentially from all the quarters in the state, the Dental Council of India inspects the college. Whatever recommendation it had, it's debated by the general body, the executive council first, and then it is stayed to uh, the central government, where the central government considers those applications, approves them or rejects them, and then finally it is gathered notified as a deemed permission to that particular course, whether it's a bachelor's course or a master's course. Okay, and Dr. Gupta, you know, once uh, college gets you know started, sure. are there regular checks that uh, you know the standards that were set out earlier and inspected earlier maintained throughout uh, the college's life? Yes, there are various type of inspections which are conducted by the Dental Council of India in order to ensure that the standards of teaching as well as equipment, infrastructure, all those things, availability of the faculty, that is maintained. The normal procedure is a routine inspection is done once in five years. Uh, whereas for the, when the college gets started, every year it is inspected till it reaches a stage of recognition which is after the final year. Same way it goes on for the, under, uh, for the post graduation also. Every year the college is inspected for uh, availability of the patients, availability of the infrastructure, faculty and all those things. So it's an annual process till the time the course is not recognized. Once it is recognized, subsequent to that inspection in dance is done once in five years. Okay, perfect. Anu, so that now brings to the, I mean we've completed the journey, how do you study medicine, how does the college get established? Now the conversation moves on to the fact as to when somebody passes out of a dental institution, and has to start practicing as a professional. So what are the steps that happen there? So when you complete your graduation, then you are registered in a state dental council. Now, state dental council, after you're registered there, the similar uh, steps are taken when you do a master's degree. If you have done your BDS and after that you've done your MDS, then you again go to the state council and your degree is added on to the same registration number. So that is essentially getting you registered in the state council to practice dentistry. After that, you either can open your own private practice, you could join a job, you could join an MNC. The field is open entirely unless you want to go abroad and do further studies. But then for that, most of the countries don't have a mutual recognition of degrees. So if you go abroad to do further studies, some countries the degrees, 
even if they are uh, so called developed nations the degree might not be recognized by, by our uh, councils so then you have to pass the licensing exam uh, which was being conducted by the dental council of india because okay. Okay, and one of the things that this uh, you know draft bill is currently doing is introducing the concept of an exit test. So, does that exist currently, or this is a new concept? It has been introduced by NEET this year that we would have a, a common uh, exam which would uh, qualify you both to practice in the country and also to uh, if you are coming from a foreign country where you had a degree from there to so get an equivalence kind of a thing kind so of that thing, you can yeah, practice so in the you country. You can practice in the country. Okay, lines. Dr. Gupta, the other thing that you know we also notice uh, extensively is unlicensed practitioners, somebody who might not have a qualified degree uh, to practice, uh, you know, the profession, sure. is actually uh, you know practicing the profession. What are the mechanisms to check that, and what are the me mechanisms to penalize such people? Well, exactly, there is a. Uh, uh, something called a state dental councils. The state co dental councils are supposed to regulate the profession of dentistry in the states. The Dental Council of India is basically concerned with the formulation rules and regulations which have to be ultimately implemented at the state level. So it is the state dental councils which are supposed to do random checks in order to ensure that uh, so called uh, quacks as you are uh, calling them off, they are not allowed to practice people who are not having a uh, uh, proper dental education or they are not qualified, uh, they should not be allowed to practice. Okay. And are there, uh, Anup, are there regulations to ensure that if there are complaints uh, by patients against uh, dentists, uh, do they have a redress mechanism where yes, both the yes. doctors and the patients can be heard? They what have a redressal mechanism. Again, it is acted upon by the State Dental Council. We have a register in the country till date which is to be changed where we have Part A and Part B. Part A essentially is those people who were practicing in our country earlier without going through the formal process of getting a bachelor's degree or a master's degree. So they were registered in the councils under a, under a register, part B register. Part A is those who have all had regular qualifications of either BDS, MDS or some foreign qualifications. So if a complaint is there, it normally goes to the state dental council, the executive body over there would debate upon it and they normally have committees which would further on act if the Offences committed are grievous and they can be police complaints, it goes to the local police station to do an inquiry jointly with the council or they can do it independently and accordingly action can be taken which can include uh, if the person is a registered dentist under any register in the state dental council, his name can be removed from the register and a show cause notice and other acts are uh, involved which would lead them to explaining what is the problem in that particular situation depending on the case. Okay. Professor Gupta, you are the principal of a government uh, dental college and one of the new additions that are being done in this bill is the introduction of a common entrance test. And uh, you know, how will that work? Uh, will this be slightly different from the current mechanism? Yes. Now, what you are probably referring is to, there is an uh, entrance test already exists before this. This is called NEET. That is National Eligibility and Entrance Test, which has been uh, in uh, practice from last two to three years. Uh, probably what you are referring to the new introduction is the next that is national exit test. Uh, basically national exit test uh, would uh, apply to people who after passing out they are allowed to do practice. Once they have to they are given license to practice they have to qualify next that is national exit test. The same test will also be applicable for MDS entrance and the same test will also be applicable for people who are doing graduation from across the world in different countries in order to equalize uh, the standard because we do not know in certain st countries it is possible that their education level may not be up to the standards that we look forward in India. So in order to streamline that and regulate that people who are passing on from other countries, they also have to appear for national exit tests so that they can be allowed to practice. Okay. Anup, you know, uh, clearly this is a comprehensive field which has a number of regulatory uh, complications. Uh, you know, deciding on curriculum, deciding on ethical practices, this requires specialization. How does that specialization come, you know, within the framework uh, that exists? The current framework is uh, very well defined and uh, you have uh, representation of almost all the specialties of dentistry in it. Because with the advancement in dentistry, the body itself, uh, the pr current scenario of the dental council and the state councils has representation from almost all the specialties. So, uh, those have been addressed well in the pre present situation that is existing. Now, the new body is going to be in line with what the, uh, the medical body is. 
So that is I think the only thing that will change. Otherwise, the government should take into consideration that representation of all specialities will be done in that body apart from as is rightly put in the bill that uh, you need to have a representation from different universities, from the council and overall national representation there is in the body. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, Dr. Gupta, one of the things that I wanted to understand was how does this current draft bill in terms of its structure compare to other legislation to regulate doctors in other fields? Well, if we compare it with the law which was existing earlier, that is the Dentist Act. And the difference between this act and that is that in the Dentist Act, there was a pandemic distribution, which means even a practitioner could be a part of it, an undergraduate student could be, uh, an undergraduate dentist could be a part of it. But in the present setup, it is only going to be people uh, who are going to be specialized, that means MDS people with minimum 15 years in active uh, practice and 7 years as a leadership. So only those people can come. So the pandemic distribution uh, would not be there because uh, this will only reflect one part of the people. Uh, there may be problems of undergraduates, there may be problems of people who are coming from state civil services, state health services or people who are coming from uh, a practice side. Uh, those people will not get representation in the new uh, bill that is the NDC, which is uh, National Dentist uh, Commission, which is being uh, proposed now. Okay. And uh, uh, Anup, any final comments about what do you think uh, the structure of the new bill as compared to the earlier bill? Well, I, I would tend to agree with Dr. Gupta over here that uh, the earlier uh, composition was very comprehensive. It gave everybody an equal opportunity to be represented. There were different ways in which you could be part of the council at both the levels. Here, it's going to be a little different where the government or maybe uh, uh, we would have a larger say in who would be representing or be part of the council or the commission as it will be called now. And as and there's a slightly higher bar that has been higher set bar up. Higher bar and that, that I personally see, I feel is not a correct way. Okay. Because uh, our country is so vast, there are so many diversified uh, situations in the country that everybody should be given an equal chance. Uh, there, the option was there of people coming through an election, through a nomination, through state nomination. So it was broadly very well covering, giving everybody an equal chance. Here the situation does seem to be made like that. Okay, and there's an opportunity to give comments on this bill till the 20th of this month. Thank you, Anup. Thank you, Dr. Gupta, for joining us on this discussion. It is time for us to end the show. You can watch our shows on the RSTV page of YouTube. We will be back with a new issue and a new episode. Keep watching Rajasabha TV.